Hi, my name is Josh, um, and I want to talk today a little bit about Nick Drake's guitar tone. Um, there's not a lot of information about this on the internet, and for me, the first time I ever heard Nick Drake's guitar playing, I just kind of stared at my stereo and thought, what in the hell is that? I, I, nobody, as far as I'm aware, ever sounded like Nick Drake uh, in their guitar playing before or, or since. And um, I've spent over 10 years trying to figure out how he made his guitar sound the way he did. And today I want to talk a little bit about that. I should caveat by saying that this is mostly my own opinion. I don't. There's very little empirical evidence about Nick's playing to go off of. Um, but uh, as somebody who's uh, studied classical guitar um, at a university and somebody who has over 10 years of fingerstyle experience, uh, this is these are my, my own conclusions that I've drawn about his playing, and I'll get into depth about why I think what I think. So this is a subject that it's a little bit hard to dissect, given that we don't even really know for sure what type of guitar Nick recorded most of his albums on. There's debate among uh, even his friends, uh, you know, who are, who are still alive, about whether he was recording on a uh, Dreadnought Martin copy, whether he was recording on some kind of small body guitar. And of course, there's the, uh, the the Red Herring Guild that he is photographed with uh, on the album cover of Brighter Later. I personally am of the opinion, after listening to his recordings extensively, that at the very least, um, Pink Moon was recorded on a small body guitar. I think that the general absence of low end on that uh, on that album is indicative of a guitar that was just had a short scale and a small body. So I think that you know one of the steps potentially to getting Nick's tone is is playing on a smaller body guitar. But the good news for us at home is that it doesn't matter terribly uh, what size of guitar we're playing on. It's not like you have to have a Guild, you know, M20 or something like that in order to get Nick's tone. It's it's uh, easy to, well, not easy, but possible to achieve it through other means. And uh, we can, at least for now, put the issue of what guitar he was recording on to rest. Uh, this is not a huge surprise uh, to most people, but Nick played on, uh, I think, incredibly dead strings. I, <laughs> I doubt if he may, I mean, he may never have even changed the strings during the whole time that he was recording, like they're so dead. Um, so on my guitar right now, I'm in a very common Nick Drake tuning, and I have on a set of light gauge uh, Daddario nickel bronze strings. There's, it's been kind of a new trend um, in, in acoustic guitar string manufacturers to start making nickel acoustic guitar strings again, uh, which is great if you're trying to play vintage sounding music or music that was recorded in the 60s and 70s because it was very common back then for strings to be made out of nickel uh, instead of like phosphor bronze uh, or something like that. And, um, and they die really fast and when they die, they really die. Uh, and they just get this incredibly kind of warm, thuddy tone with not a lot of overtone, not a lot of sparkle, um, and a really clear difference between the wound and unwound strings, timbrely. And that's something which I think really characterized a lot of Nick's recordings. Um, I suspect that he recorded on nickel strings for some of his career. So I'm, I'm playing with Daddario Nickel Bronze 1254 strings and uh, I think that they work well. They've been on my guitar now for several months and have really had time to lose all of their sheen and uh, I've been very pleased with how close I've been able to get with this. Especially in the sort of absent bass tone, you know. I think Nick was hitting his blow strings fairly hard but there's just not a lot of it came through. And I think that's in part because he was playing on some very, very dead nickel strings. The second thing that we should talk about is fingernails. I think that Nick played with a fairly long thumbnail, uh, like the one that I've got here. And then I think he played with kind of medium length on his other three fingers, um, so that you are getting some flesh in there. You're actually grabbing the, the, grabbing the string with the... the uh, the flush of your fingertip, but then releasing on the nail. And I think that he played uh, with a very sort of classical wrist down position like this, because he gets this kind of clicky sound, like that on his high strings. And that's usually from playing really, like, really parallel with the strings with your fingernails. As opposed to, he didn't have that sound. He had that sound. Um, 
Um, so that's another another component to the tone. There is the the length of the nails and the position of the right hand as you play his, as you play his music. I also think that he played uh, with his thumb. So some fingerstyle players play with their thumb like this, and they play in such a way that the the thumb. Like that, where the thumb kind of catches the nail as it goes by, but I think that he actually played in a more classical way, which was to say he kept the the joint of his thumb uh, a little bit bent like this, and was use, was using his thumbnail uh, very very much like a like a thumb pick uh, to articulate the lower strings. Easy Jane is a great, uh, a great example of that. As far as playing position, I think that Nick was picking right over the middle of the sound hole. When I play fingerstyle generally, I, I tend to pick a little bit closer towards the back edge of the sound hole, um, but that doesn't quite sound right for his music. Uh, it's a little too biting. You have to move it. So just to quickly review, um, we have a smaller body guitar, probably, nickel strings, which are very, very dead, medium length fingernails and a long thumbnail, a classical hand position, uh, playing over the middle of the sound hole. So now let's try and combine all of those elements and uh, and see what results we can get. I'll play a little bit of a horn and things behind the sun. So thanks very much for watching. I'm glad that I'm not the only one who is this interested in getting Nick Drake's guitar tone. If you have any questions uh, or any disputes, please leave them in the comments and I'd love to talk about it.